So if you've ever taken a comparative politics course in the field of political science, then you probably already know that democracy itself as a term is very, very contested. And that's for good reason. It's because democracy is kind of difficult to pin down. I think that a lot of people view democracy as a dichotomy. You know, a country is either democratic or they're not democratic, when in actuality, democracy is more of a spectrum. And it's difficult to measure. There's a lot of different things that you need to look at. Now, all throughout grad school, I really relied on these organizations like Polity4 and Freedom House. And what they do is they basically measure how democratic a democracy is because democracies are not monolithic. I mean, there's a certain set of expectations that we have for democracies, but really, you know, some are more democratic than others. So, the United States, we're always reliably mediocre. We are firmly in the category of democracy in spite of our flaws, but of course, other countries outperform us. But you have to be nuanced. You have to look at different factors here because a country might be seemingly democratic when in actuality, they're not a real democracy. So, I mean, the easiest example is North Korea. They're called the Democratic Republic or Democratic People's Republic. They have democracy in the name, but obviously you can't take them at their word. They're not a democracy. They might hold elections, but the elections are rigged. I mean, Kim Jong-un gets like 99% of the vote. So even if you have elections, just because you have elections, that doesn't mean that you're a democracy. That doesn't mean that those elections are free and fair. And even if you have what is viewed as free and fair elections, where you have a multi-party system and you are a political party that can get elected, well, how much power do you have in government? For example, Morocco is a multi-party system. Different parties run, different parties get elected, but they have a king there. So even if you're elected, you can't really affect change. And having the ability to have power and change the system, that's part of being a democracy. So there's a lot that goes into it. And every single year, various organizations like Freedom House and Polity4 will release reports where they'll rank democracies. Now, this new organization, it's called uh, the International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance. For the first time, they found that the United States is no longer just a reliably mediocre democracy. We're actually backsliding. We're moving away from democracy and towards authoritarianism. Now, it's not a gigantic shift. It's not like we're no longer a democracy, but this trend backwards is very, very alarming. Now, our move towards authoritarianism more so, it's it's marginal, right? It's a small move, but it's still a move nonetheless. Our move is part of a broader global trend because there are more countries globally that are moving more closer to authoritarianism than they are to democracies. Now, just to clarify something, if you're wondering, well, if you're already a democracy, how do you become more of a democracy? Well, you expand suffrage. You make sure that more people can vote. You reduce barriers that make it difficult to vote. You have an electoral system that allows people to actually make their voices heard. You have a free press that isn't subject to intimidation. You have a lack of political violence. There's a lot that goes into it. So, when I see this organization that monitors democracies around the world say that the U.S. is backsliding, that is something to take very, very seriously. So, for a summary of the report, we go to Julia Conley of Common Dreams, who explains, For the first time in its four years of compiling annual data on the state of democracy around the world, an international think tank added the United States to its list of backsliding democracies in the report it released Monday, pointing to factors including politicians' continued false claims that the 2020 presidential election results were illegitimate as one of the key elements weakening the country's democratic system. The Global State of Democracy report released by the International Institute for Democracy and electoral assistance called former President Donald Trump's public questioning of the election results in November of 2020 a historic turning point, both for U.S. democracy and the world, pointing to a knock-on effect in several countries. The visible deterioration of democracy in the United States as seen in the increasing tendency to contest credible election results, the efforts to suppress participation in elections, and the runaway polarization is one of the most concerning developments International Idea Secretary General Kevin Casasamora told The Guardian. Now, I just want to reiterate that this is not unique to the United States. This is part of a global trend, but this is the first time where we've actually been demonstrably moving towards authoritarianism. Now, the jump, again, is not huge, 
but it's a jump nonetheless. And that's something to take very, very seriously. Uh, so, I mean, all of the things that they cite, I mean, we see it happening. Efforts to suppress participation in elections. How many GOP-controlled states have enacted reforms that suppress voting, restrict the amount of uh, polling stations in predominantly uh, areas with people of color, voter ID laws, all of this effort to restrict access to voting, that is authoritarianism. That's by definition an authoritarian thing to do. And the GOP is doing it out in the open. On top of that, Donald Trump lying about the 2020 election, that had lasting consequences. Yes, he wasn't able to steal the election yet, but the fact that he did that, that caused long-term harm because when you delegitimize an electoral system itself, people lose faith in democracy and democracy needs legitimacy to be able to function. If people don't believe in democracy, if they don't believe democracy is a way that they can actually affect political change, if they feel like their voices aren't being heard, then guess what happens? Democracy declines because people opt for non-democratic ways to affect change politically. Uh, on top of that, you know, runaway polarization, something that we see here, obviously. And sure, you know, um, polarization isn't unique to the United States. Many countries are polarized here. But the reason why we're polarized is, let's face it, Republicans are going uh, far and far to the right. They're getting more extreme every single year. Think back to 20, uh, 2008, Sarah Palin was the most extreme Republican, and now we have many members elected to Congress in the GOP who are far more insane than Sarah Palin. We're seeing runaway radicalization on the right, and that is going to drive polarization, and if the Republican Party doesn't moderate anytime soon, this is a trend that will continue. So I want to go to the full report and point out some key findings here that I think that are important. So more countries moved in an authoritarian direction in 2020 than in a democratic direction. Uh, also, some of the world's largest democracies have been backsliding. So that includes us, but also Brazil, India, as well as some EU countries. Also, conspiracy theories about elections is driving the change, and Trump's lies about the 2020 election is having spillover effects to other countries. So, you know, that's nice. You're welcome, world, for, uh, you know, electing this strong man that is now hurting your democracy. Now, as you can see from this figure, the overall number of democracies has decreased globally. Democracies that saw the biggest decline between 2010 and 2020 include Turkey, Brazil, and others. Now, Bolivia is on this list as well, but I'm assuming that at the time this report was made, Bolivia was still under control of fascist autocrats, whereas they've since moved back towards democracy with socialists taking power. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so they probably will be out of this category when the next report is released. Now, looking at the overall map of regime types, you can see that the United States is now considered a backsliding democracy. And then, you know, we're still not as bad as other countries. China is just authoritarian. Russia is a high hybrid regime and in some of these countries it's complicated because parties again can compete like in russia you can have a party that competes but that party can't actually affect change in that political system so in a lot of these countries there's a facade of democracy but none of the benefits that come with democracy itself there's no real power transitions or civil liberties so that's some that they look at here when they evaluate how democratic a country is now drivers of democratic decline include the rise of a liberal and populist parties in government not populist in the bernie sense mind you but populist in the trump bolsonaro fascistic sense now they also write democratic backsliding is also linked to increasing levels of societal and political polarization and low levels of support for democracy economic crises are also tied to declining support for democracy and democratic Democratic backsliding mimicking contributes to the spread of democratic deterioration as countries tend to imitate the anti-democratic behavior of others. <coughs> Donald Trump, the struggle to balance freedom of expression, especially through social media with public safety, as well as the scourge of disinformation can further democratic declines. So basically, the takeaway is that this report should be a wake-up call. Now, thankfully, there's a poll that I went over that showed that at least young Americans know that democracy is in trouble in the United States. But the good news is that there's still time to correct this. There's still time to change the direction that we're headed in and move in the opposite direction. The problem is that we have a party in power who isn't serious about doing just that. Democrats can pass electoral reform. They can pass a new Voting Rights Act if they get rid of the filibuster. Uh, and because of partisan gerrymandering, you know, they have a limited amount of time to act. 
because partisan gerrymandering, also authoritarian, is going to lead to them being out of power. So it's kind of like, if you don't fix this now, you're not really going to have the opportunity to fix it. So in the short term, we're just going to continue sliding towards authoritarianism. And that's bad because, you know, once you get more and more momentum, then it's going to be harder to reverse that trend. So it's worrying, but, you know, we still have time to act. Democrats still have time to act if they get serious and they stop fucking around and they actually get rid of the filibuster and Biden actually actually exerts pressure on members of his party that are hindering change, obstructing his agenda, but they're not serious. And, you know, part of the issue here, like with Turkey, for example, Turkey saw one of the biggest swings back towards authoritarianism between 2010 and 2020, and that's because of Erdogan. President Tayyip Erdogan is an autocrat. I mean, he publicly was talking about destroying his political enemies. That's not something that's healthy for a democracy, right? Now, part of the reason why Erdogan was able to be so successful in Turkey is because he weaponized religion when the country was pretty historically secular um, for the most part. I mean, it, it was a country that was influenced by Ataturk, but, you know, uh, Tayyip Erdogan introduced religion back into the mix. He disregarded the system's laicite form of governments where you can't put religion above government. He shirked all of that. And part of the reason why he was able to be so su successful here is because the liberal opposition was weak and didn't fight him hard enough. So we saw it happen in Turkey. We know why it happened because they saw a charismatic authoritarian strongman take hold and the liberals were too weak to act. And we're seeing a similar thing here. I mean, Trump isn't in power anymore, but he may run again. And the Republican party is still far right. They're still fascistic. They're mostly proto-fascist but more and more elements of the gop is just outright fascist at this point american conservatism has morphed into fascism and when you have a weak liberal party in the democrats who don't actually take this threat seriously and enact change and they just use it to do fundraising and they fearmonger about the threat just aesthetically but they don't actually try to meaningfully change it it's it's a disastrous cat you know um not a disastrous uh, category, but it makes for a dangerous situation where you're just enabling disaster and enabling a further deterioration of democracy. So, you know, this is something that I hope people take seriously, but um, I don't think that they will. At least people in power won't take it seriously enough and they'll say that they will, but they still won't do enough. So either way, it's uh, frustrating, but this is a really, really um, chilling thing to see. The U.S. is backsliding. We're moving more towards authoritarianism than democracy. And it's not surprising, but to see it actually show up in one of these reports here, it's not surprising. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.